What's up everyone, this is David Allen with MBS Fitness and today I'm going to explain to you all the Forge Velocity Curve. So the Forge Velocity Curve is a pretty simple uh, representation of the relationship between force and velocity. And that relationship is an inverse one. What that means is the higher the force, the lower the velocity, and the higher the velocity, the lower the force. A really simple representation of this is if I took a wiffle ball and I threw it into your stomach as hard as I could, while the velocity would be high, the force would be relatively low because the mass of the wiffle ball is low. Then if I took a bowling ball and I threw that into your stomach as hard as I could, while the velocity would be much lower, the force would be much higher because that, the mass of that uh, bowling ball is much higher than the mass of the wiffle ball. All right, so next we can go over some of the terminology that you see here. So on opposite ends, we have max strength, max velocity. Max strength is your ability to produce maximum force output, uh, maximum contractile potential of a muscle. So this would be things like one rep max, uh, swap and sell them. Uh, the opposite end we see max velocity. This would be things um, like swinging a golf club, swinging a tennis racket, spring a 100 meter dash. It's your ability to uh, shorten and extend a muscle as fast as possible. Kind of into these in-between zones, we have strength speed and speed strength. Strength speed is your ability to move uh, relatively high weights at a relatively high speed. So this would be like 85 to 90 percent of one rep max done as fast as possible. Speed strength is the ability to move lighter loads as fast as possible. So this would be things like you know 50 to 60 percent uh, done at max speed. And then in this in between we see power, uh, and this is kind of the marriage of you know maximum force output and maximum velocity. Uh, together. Typically you're going to hear you know, Olympic lifts called you know, the, the, most, the ones that, that require the most power because they have a high force component and a high velocity component at the same time. Alright, so here's the deal. Each sport falls somewhere along this force velocity curve. So obviously powerlifting falls more towards this end, uh, short distance track and field events fall more towards this end, your power speed sports kind of fall more in here, baseball, basketball, football, soccer. Stuff like that. Two misconceptions people have is that if I'm going to train an athlete and they fall in any one particular portion of this, then that's all they spend their time training. You need to spend your time training the entire force velocity curve because each individual component is going to help build other components up, push the curve this way, and make you a better athlete. That's not to say that, you know, more focus may need to be put towards a certain area, but the entire strength, uh, entire force velocity curve needs to be trained. The second misconception that people have is that this equals powerlifting, this equals Olympic lifting, and this equals track and field. Nothing could be further from the truth. Those are each their own individual sports, which require their each individual you know techniques. And asking your athlete to become an expert at those techniques on top of their own sports techniques is asking a lot. And you could potentially be putting your, your athlete at potential for risk. So for example, you got a baseball player and you want to develop his power. You think, ah man, I got to, he's gotta be training the Olympic lifts. Guess what? You're putting a baseball player at a lot of potential risk, having them do a lot of overhead work and a lot of work that's gonna potentially strain their wrists and elbow. There's other lifts, other exercises that will develop power and not put that athlete at risk. So don't get stuck in the mindset that in order to develop max strength, I have to be doing power lifting. In order to develop power, I must be doing Olympic lifting. To develop max velocity, I must be doing uh, track and field events. That's not the case. Stay tuned for more from MBS Fitness.